Now, quite often I will get a message through from a producer friend of mine, or I might get a comment under one of my YouTube videos, or maybe even an email from the author of a plugin or a piece of software or a service asking me to review it on my channel. Now, it's not something I've ever done before because there's loads of people out there that already do reviews of plugins and software and things like that for music producers. But I do love playing around with stuff. I love kind of testing stuff out, seeing if it works for me. And I thought, well, why don't I just do that on this channel? So in this new series of videos that I'm going to be calling Test Lab, I'm going to be going through different bits of software, hardware, basically anything that comes across my desk. I'm going to see what it's like to use within my own tracks. So this is kind of practical uses, whether it actually works for me, whether I can actually make something with it. So it's not a case of going through all the features and reviewing it and saying what it does and all that kind of stuff. It's actually playing with the software or plugin or whatever it is and actually seeing if it works for me. That's what we're going to be doing in this series. And the first one I want to get into is something that's been on my list for quite a while and it actually came out maybe two, three years ago, maybe more, but they've just released a new version. It's called Xtrack Sems. It's by a company called Audionamics. And basically what it is, it's an app that allows you to take a final track, a finished track and split it up into stems. It intelligently kind of analyzes it and splits it up into different parts. So you'll get the drums out, you'll get the music out of it, you'll get the vocals out of it, the effects out of it. It'll split it up into four different tracks. Now, quite recently, Recently, a company called Deezer released this open source app or code or something, whatever it is, called Splitter, which allows you to do just that, which is why a whole load of different websites popped up, you know, allowing you to upload your tracks and it will split it up into the different stems. Now, Xtracks has been around for quite a while. So this is kind of a, a really kind of refined product, something I've never tried before, but I'm really interested because this new version looks really nice. I got sent the link by a friend of mine and yeah, it looks really nice. The interface looks good, at least from the screenshots, it looks like a well put together app and probably one of the slickest solutions out there at the moment. Now it does seem to be a subscription based service. It does have a free trial. You get two days to try it for free, which I suppose if you're going to like if you take a weekend to really kind of look at it, for example, then you could probably see whether it's for you or not. And then it goes on to a subscription base. So six months is $40 and a year is $60. Now, I suppose if you're going to be doing a lot of bootlegs and remixes, which is what I'm assuming this product is kind of aimed at, because it's all about taking final files or final tracks that let's let's face it, probably aren't yours and splitting them up into the different parts so you can then use them in something else. So yeah, it is kind of aimed, I'm guessing, at remixers that want to make bootleg remixes of stuff. So if you're going to be doing that quite a bit, if you're a DJ, if you like producing these quite a bit, then maybe it might come in handy. So as I say, it's been on my list to check out for a little while now. So I thought today I'll go through it and see what it can do. OK, so this is interesting. It actually says a three day free trial. So on the front of the website, it says two day free trial. And on here it says three day. I guess you really need to pay attention just to make sure. I'm definitely going to be canceling it within two days just in case. But yeah, on here it definitely says three days. OK, so that's all signed up and I'm on the trial now. So I'm going to install the app. OK, so we're now in the app and by the looks of it to get started, I need to drag and drop an audio file in. So let's go and find a track. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to import one of my own tracks. Now, it's not an ego thing. I just want to know, obviously, I've got all the stems for this track, so I know how each stem should sound. This is my latest track called Once Again. So I'm going to take this master track. So I've got the original file in here now. I'm going to go through and play it. OK, so that's the original track. And I guess now it's just a case of going through and processing it. So it looks like we have different options down the bottom here. So four stems, which I think is the kind of standard option. We can get the acapella out of it, the backing. I don't know why it just doesn't say instrumental. Uh, we've got drums and then the bass. So we can choose what we want out of it. I think let's go for the four stems. Let's get everything. And now it's going to the website. It wants me to sign in. Oh, I guess this is kind of linking your account. OK, so now that's done. It looks like it's uploading that mastered file. So this is why it says you need a fast Internet connection, because obviously it's uploading the track and it's going to do all that server side. 
So really this app is just an uploader and a downloader by the looks of it. And by the miracle of editing, we'll just uh, make this all go really nice and quick. So it looks like we now have our stems. I think it took about a minute, but I'll put on screen how long it actually took. It looks like the app pretty much just uploads the original file. Everything is processed online and then it just downloads it. So this app really is just an uploader and a downloader and maybe a playback kind of thing. But I'm more kind of concerned with obviously what the quality of everything is. So I think we can probably navigate through it here. Oh, so you can't even click and it's making regions for some reason. I don't know why. Can I click and drag? No, I can't even click and drag the playhead. That's a little bit annoying. So I just have to click where I want to start it. OK, never mind. Let's try this then. So I think I'm mainly concerned about the vocal. If I'm using something like this, it's probably to get the vocals out. So let's solo the vocals and see how they turned out. <laughs> It doesn't sound that clean. It's not something I'd be able to use. It sounds like a really kind of poor DIY acapella. I'm not sure on that. There is an option here to de-bleed, which I think is probably about mixing it in with the original, maybe. So let's give that a go. Let's turn it on and see what we can do with that. I mean, it's OK, but it's not great. I don't think it's great. Let's have a listen to the drums, see what's done with the drums. Nah, let's have a look at the bass. Let's have a look at the other. I can't say I'm too impressed with what it's done with this track, but it might just be this track. It might work well on another one. So let's let's try another one. Let's just write this one off and try another track. OK, so I've chosen a remix I've done for Kevin Fisher, which is uh, the message remix that I released a little while ago. This, again, has got a full vocal running throughout. So I kind of want to see whether it can pick this one out. OK, so we now got the stems back. I think this one took about a minute as well. Bearing in mind, I'm on about a 200 megabyte connection, so I'm on quite a quick connection. So the downloading and uploading should have been quite quick. Processing was quite quick as well. Uh, let's see how it's done. Let's have a listen to the vocal. I'm still really keen on seeing what it does with the vocal. Danced in the circle. You can see the sweat dripping from their body. combined with tears of joy but they knew that through the dance there were drums all night long hey Inae sang the poor people in the villages with much faith I mean, it's OK if you want to create like a rough bootleg, but it's not great. It, it's uh, to be honest, if you if you had a lot of other elements that you put with it, say, for example, you were making a bootleg with the acapella that it generates, you would probably have to put quite a lot of elements alongside it to really make it work. If you were make, say, for example, you were making something that was quite sparse, quite minimal, then that vocal would stand out as not being great quality so yeah i don't think that would be quite usable in a bootleg now again whether this is just my tracks i don't know perhaps maybe i've just got a way of kind of really embedding the vocal that it makes it very hard to kind of pull out in a process like this so yeah i'm not sure let's have a listen to a few of the other stems and see what it's done Ah, 
I mean, you definitely got some phasing, some kind of, yeah, some flanging going on with the drums. They're quite clean, though, although with the kick, you can hear the bass kind of coming in a little bit. See how what it's done with the bass. Now, you could definitely use the bass. Say, for example, you wanted to sample that bass, you could definitely probably use that within a track, maybe use that as a kind of an element, maybe just as a texture almost that could kind of work i i can see what they're doing with it they're filtering it and that, that kind of makes it work but that's it's a fairly kind of clean bass signal let's hear what the other is i'm really, always quite interested to see what the other is <laughs> You can actually hear the heavy side chaining that I've got going on with this track. So again, it makes one of those things, it makes it a little bit harder to use, certainly with the elements of this. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm wondering whether any of these separation options actually does anything different. Let's try the just the a cappella on its own. So that doesn't seem to have done anything at all. I think it's pr probably because I've already got the vocals within here anyway. Perhaps just having like the acapella or the backing or drums or whatever means that it only processes and downloads those parts. If you go for the four stems, then it's already done all of them already. So it's not really kind of doing anything different. Yeah, I suppose that's what it, it is, what it is. Let's try one more example. I'm going to try something that's not mine and seeing whether it can do something with that. OK, so I'm going to try a different artist this time rather than my own stuff. This is Armin van Helden's You Don't Know Me. I think everybody knows this one, but I'm really I'm really keen to see whether it can get a better a cappella out of it. I mean, I think probably with maybe a pop track or something that's clearly designed with a vocal as the center of it all, then maybe it might be able to get a better a cappella out of it. Maybe with a pop track or a rap track or something like that, maybe that will be able to just it'll just be able to clear it a little bit better. OK, so we got our stems. It took a little bit longer, but then I guess this is a bit of a longer track. So again, let's have a look at the vocals. That's what I'm really kind of keen to hear. And when I try to move on up, they're always pulling me down. I'm tired and I had enough. It's my life and I'm living it now. You don't know. You don't know me. You don't know me. You don't know me. I'm living life. You don't understand me. So why do you do my life? it's still really laced in there it's going to be hard i guess it's i i it's just the way the track is mixed i think you're not going to be able to get the vocal any cleaner out of that as you can see i was kind of using the the d bleed just to kind of see what it was like with almost more of the original track in there and again you're you're trying to find this balance between hearing the actual music and hearing the vocal on its own and it's just so hard to separate i think as good as ai is at the moment and as good as these algorithms are they're still not kind of a lot of this isn't going to be usable i think you really have to find a certain type of track where it works i just want to hear the other stems just just to see what it sounds like I mean, there might be some usable bits in there. If you're very creative with how you do your remix or your bootleg or whatever, then there might be some elements in there that you could use. I, I still don't think that that vocal is clean enough. So I've gone through my collection to see if I can find anything where the vocal maybe sits a little bit higher in the mix, so it's not quite as mixed in. And 
obviously it probably would work better with maybe a pop track or something like that where the, the the vocal is clearly sitting above everything else and i don't really have anything like that because generally it's not what i play but i've got this great track by elderbrook called capricorn and i think this might work a little bit more i don't want to say minimal but it's got less elements kind of fitting around that vocal. So this might work a little bit better. So again, I'm gonna go for hit for the four stems and see what we can get with this. This is a shorter track. It's more like a, almost a radio edit, an extended radio edit, if you wanna call it that. Um, so it might process it a little bit quicker. So we got all those elements now. Weirdly, it didn't take any less time. It seems like it took exactly the same amount of time as a couple of my tracks, to be honest. Maybe it's just the processing being done on it. So let's focus in on the vocal straight away. I want to see what it's done with that. Our Capricorn knows when the love is gone Cause she reads those horoscopes She does it every morning And I wait to see if we got any hope and if the stars align, she doesn't seem to mind me being around it all. And I hope the calm is right, but I guess it just relies on the day that I was born. No matter where I go, I'll never be in control. I mean, it's it's better. It certainly sounds better. It maybe is a little bit more usable, but it's certainly, it still sounds like a DIY acapella. You can still hear elements of the original track in there, especially the kind of percussive sounds that are kind of, they almost kind of hit the same as the vocal and they're kind of very mixed in with it. it I, I'm not expecting this software to perform miracles. That's the thing. We know that obviously this is just, it's taking a track that is so well mixed. Everything is supposed to be mixed together. It's supposed to sound as one. So we, which we're almost expecting some kind of black magic to kind of separate this out and make it perfect what i am saying though is that it's just i don't know whether it's still usable that's the only thing maybe if you put some reverb on there a bit of delay you could maybe mask some of that stuff yeah i'm not sure let's have a listen to the other uh, stems within here as well Yeah, it's really interesting how it actually separates that. I'm not, not quite sure. I think the other is obviously just everything it can't assume is bass, drums, or vocals, which is interesting. There's not much in this in this trap that really is other. So I've got some really mixed opinions on this bit of software because in many ways, it's amazing. Like what it's doing is pure magic because it's taking a finished audio file it's been fully mastered. Everything is all kind of joined into one. And it's actually taking that and splitting it up into its various different bits. If you thought of like a piece of art that's hanging in a gallery, imagine taking that and then extracting every different color from it. You know, it's just, it's a bonkers thing to do really. And the fact that it works at all is amazing. But, but the other half of me is thinking, is it actually usable though? Like can I actually use any of those parts individually to make something else? And I'm not sure I can because that vocal isn't clean enough to use. Even if I put effects on it, EQ on it and stuff like that, it's still really not going to be usable as a bootleg, as a remix, whatever I'm doing with it. I just don't think I can do anything with it. There are maybe parts of it that I can maybe use. Maybe, for example, the bass on certain tracks, maybe I could sample that in some way. Or maybe there's an effect that maybe I could parse out or maybe just I haven't found the right track to run through here where it just gets it right. But I did try four tracks and only one of them, it kind of did it in a way that I might be able to use, which isn't a good strike record for me. If I was trying out any service, any kind of software, and I had to try it like four times to get even something remotely usable out of it, then I wouldn't use it again. And to be honest, I don't think I'm going to keep the subscription on this because one, I don't think I'm going to use it that much. And two, 
what it does what does come out of it is just not usable for me so yeah i think this is something that will get better as ai gets better as their algorithm gets better you know i think it's something that could be usable maybe in the future it just needs some tweaks it needs some maturity maybe but at the moment I just don't think I'm going to be using it. So yeah, it's a good bit of software and I think you should definitely try it out. If you can try it out, try it out. But for me, I'm just going to, it's, it's going to be a no, I think. So for this test, yeah, it's not going to be something I'm going to be using going forward. So hopefully this has been useful to you. You've got, you know, it's given you a kind of an idea of what this software can do and how I would use it or not use it in this case. Don't forget there's loads more stuff like this on my channel. So definitely check out the rest of the stuff on my channel. If you like anything on there, don't forget to subscribe as well because I'm always publishing brand new videos. So definitely get subscribed, hit that notification bell, and hopefully I'll see you again in the next video.